Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's review the concept of entropy. Entropy is a measure of disorder or a measure of availability of heat to do work. And so what we can say is that either the situation becomes more disorderly or there is less available heat to do work with. That is accomplished by taking heat where it's hot to places where it's cold until everything is at uniform temperature and as long as there's no differential in temperature, you cannot do any work. You can only do work if there's a difference in temperature. So whenever heat is transferred, the ability to do work declines, which means entropy goes up. Now, here we have some illustrations of that. For example, if you have three rocks piled on top of each other, that's an orderly situation. In nature, you typically will not encounter that because things tend to go to disorder where all the rocks will be side by side and not organized in an orderly fashion. So from order to disorder, entropy goes up. Let's say we have six coins and they all show up heads. You take the six coins, you throw them in the air, they fall down. They tend to go to a situation where half will be heads and half will be tails. That's a more disorderly situation than where we started from. Again, that's an increase in entropy. But a more practical way of looking at entropy would be in the exchange of heat. Let's say we have a container with one liter of water at 100 degrees Celsius, which is 373 Kelvin, and we have another container, one liter of water at zero degrees Celsius. Now we provide a conducting path such that heat will travel from where it's hot to where it's cold until they're both at the same temperature, which means they're both then at, are at thermal equilibrium. The equation to calculate the change in entropy, and yes, we use the letter S for entropy, is to take all the heat that was removed from a hot reservoir, that will be negative, because when we remove heat, that's a negative heat change, divide that by the average temperature of the hot reservoir. We add that to, to the same heat that's now added to the cold reservoir, it's the same quantity, but now it's a positive value over the average temperature of the cold reservoir. Now, if this one started at 100 and went down to 50, the average will be 75, which is a greater temperature, average temperature, than going from 0 to 50, where the average is 25, and that's Celsius degrees converted to Kelvin. So the equation becomes as follows. So we have the heat removed divided by the hot temperature, the average hot temperature, plus the heat added divided by the average cold temperature. Now the Qs will be the same because the same amount of heat transferred. So it's MC delta T with a negative and then MC delta T with a positive divided over the average temperature of the hot reservoir divided by the average temperature of the cold reservoir. 75 Celsius, the average is 348. 25 Celsius, the average is 298 Kelvin. We have one kilogram times the 4186 joules per kilogram per Kelvin times a change in 50 Kelvin. And notice that is minus 601 joules per Kelvin for the left side and plus 702 joules per Kelvin for the right side. When you add them together, you get a positive quantity. Regardless of what happens, when you transfer heat from one place to another, you always add up, end up with a positive delta S in a closed system. Now, we can usually use, use the average temperature, or we can use this equation, which is derived when we do the integral of the situation. And so we can say that delta S is MC times the natural log of the final temperature of the initial temperature for where we remove the heat from the hot. And then we add that heat to the cold, where it's MC times the natural log of T final or T initial. Using the very same numbers, one kilogram, 4,186 joules per kilogram per Kelvin times the natural log of the final temperature divided by the initial temperature for the hot reservoir. Since the numerator is smaller than the denominator, that will end up being a negative quantity. And the same here, one kilogram, 4,186 joules uh, per kilogram per Kelvin degree times the natural log of the final temperature of the initial temperature. This will be positive value because the final is bigger than the initial. So we get minus 602 plus 704, we get a delta of 102 joules per Kelvin. Notice that the value you get is virtually the same using this technique versus that technique, although this technique will give you a more accurate value, especially when the change in temperature is larger. When the change in temperature is relatively small, the average temperature works quite nicely. When the temperature change is big, you should probably go to this method right here. But that's the concept of entropy. It is an increase in disorder or it is a change in that delta S, which is defined by whenever heat is transferred, 
delta S will go up in this fashion. And that is how it's done.